Good evening from Haas Pavilion in Berkeley and welcome to Pac-12 Basketball presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. The Washington Huskies continue their tour of California while the Golden Bears play the first of three straight home games. Hey, courtside with Don McLean, I am JB Long. Hope you're having a great night. Thank you for spending part of it with us. Well, both of these teams looking for their third win in conference play. And I think each of them have proven to be among the more entertaining offensive teams in the Pac-12. Yeah, no doubt. Both teams like to get up and down. We got the two leading scorers in the Pac-12 going against each other. This should be a fun one. I think it's going to come down to who can who can turn the other team over more and get out in transition. I think those fast break points are going to be big tonight. A big component of that offensive turnaround, of course, the transfer portal, including here in Berkeley, where Jalen Tice is going to try and lead the Pac-12 in scoring. He's arguably the best scorer in the league, but so is the other guy on the other team, Keon Brooks, because they do it at all three levels. Tyson can get to the rim, he can get to that mid game like you see, and he's a he's a good three point shooter at 38 percent. The trick with him is you got to keep off the foul line. He's so big and strong and getting into the lane, the tendency is to foul him, put him on the line, but he is tough to deal with. And Seve Severe Wheeler is really coming on for this Washington team. At 27 against UCLA on Sunday. But to me, he's the biggest key, even though Brooks is their leading scorer, because of what he does to your defense in transition and in the half court with his speed getting into the teeth of the defense, whether he scores for himself or, or gets others involved, he breaks your defense down. Cal's really got to get back and wall him off tonight. In addition to what he's done, score the basketball, still the active D1 leader in assists. And we'll see three of the top five transfer scoring leaders in the pack here tonight. Caleb Love already leading Arizona to a win this week last night in Tucson against USC. Welcome to college basketball in 2023. Most teams have transfers, but these five are really doing a nice job for their respective teams. And Jalen Cohn, who we're going to see for Cal, is sixth on that list. Going to look at Wilhelm Breidenbach, the junior big from modern day down in Southern California. He's going to start for Mike Hopkins on your left there. Mark Madsen set to play three straight at Haas Pavilion with his Golden Bears. Interesting that Breidenbach is starting because of the fact of the size of Fardaz Amak and his rebounding ability. Braxton Mia had been starting for Washington. He's not tonight. I guess we're going to find out as the game goes along why Mia isn't starting, but big chore for Brian Bach. Biggest thing for him is he's got to keep Amak off the glass. I know you're with Mike Hopkins and the Huskies last weekend at UCLA. They opted to stay in California through the holiday weekend and continue this tour now through the Bay Area. It's going to be entertaining tonight. Looking forward to this one. I think I'm a lot. Go ahead, JB. I'm going to say the contrast between Washington turning it over a season high in that loss against UCLA and Cal valuing possessions mm -hmm. as well as they have all year in their last two games. Good action early. Amac, a little flip shot. But Jalen Cohn to me, and I've said this all year, he is the X factor for Cal because of his ability to stretch the floor and make threes. When he gets going, it seems like Cal wins when he has multiple threes. He's already had three games of seven made threes in a game. So let's see what Washington does with him. Moses with the first miss, a whistle and a bucket for Keon Brooks Jr. Uh, we didn't highlight Brooks in the open, but he he's, he's the exact same thing I said about Tyson. You can say about Brooks, three level score, can get to the rim obviously, get to that mid range game. And the biggest part for Brooks this year is the improved three point shooting, 41% from behind the line. That had been missing from his game in college now he's added that makes him even more difficult to deal with what was it against ucla only nine field goals attempted at the pavilion i think ucla is a good enough defensive team if they want to take one guy out they can do it that's why wheeler had such a big game they spent so much time on keon brooks there's wheeler on defense tyson what a play by back. tyson oh little eye fake makes the extra pass and maybe he should have laid it in he definitely should have laid it in Watch this effort by Tyson. It looked like Wheeler had it easily, and Tyson stayed with it and just dug it out. Reminds me what some uh, nose guards are doing in football these days when they know the opposing quarterback's going to spike it, kind of dive in through the offensive line to try and intercept it and retrieve. Our first trip to the monitor comes at 
1858. Thank goodness, because the game I was at last night, we didn't have enough of those. <laughs> Uh, I know how to strike a nerve with Don McLean, <laughs> don't I? Randy McCall, Greg Nixon, Mike Littlewood, our crew here tonight at Haas Pavilion. And this is a Whole Foods Market official review. Well, you mentioned them being on the road, JB, since last Thursday. Um, in the effect of that. Sometimes it's good to be away and you can just focus on basketball, no distractions, and sometimes it goes the other way. Especially with college players, I think it's different. NBA players are used to being on the road for long stretches. A good start for Washington, Keon Brooks, that three-point play. Maybe just shaking up their road routine can help them win their first conference road game of the season. They're two and 11 in conference road games since the start of last year. Well, a new era here at Cal, and I think it's hard, you know, to, to compare the two. Mark Matson in his first year establishing his way of doing things, doing it differently than they've done it in the past few years here at Cal. Um, in terms of getting players roster construction with the portal and how they're playing. So all that to determine that there was no shot clock reset. You see it at seven there, and then a foul on the inbound to push it back to 20. Well, what's different with Washington this year, JB, is they are predominantly man. In the past with Mike Hopkins, it's been mostly zone with a little bit of man. This year, it's the opposite. Still throwing in some zone of late as Cohen knocks down the three, but different looking Washington defense with with it being more man-to-man -man than it's ever been under Mike Hopkins at Washington. Good sign for Cal that Cone gets an early three. You look at the contrast between his first 11 games and his most recent six as Breidenbach travels. It's not overstating it to say that Cal goes as he goes. Yeah, he's he's been around for, for a long time. And, and for Jalen Cone at his size to be able to get himself free and get to spots, shows you how experienced he is. The scouting report says he's looking for threes and hunting threes. And usually smaller guys, you can put length on them and they can't get to him. He finds a way to get to him. Now on the roll, it's Amac with the mid-range again. Tip rebound and the put back for Tyson. One more thing Tyson does, offensive rebound. A good rebounder, sixth in the, in the Pac-12 in overall rebounding. Now a steal. Fire ahead to Cone. He stops at the line. Dribbles into a triple. And we're going the other way. Amac with the foul on the board. Uh, Amac is an aggressive rebounder on both on both boards. And so Brooks got inside position. He got the foul. Pac-12's leading rebounder, one of five major conference players, averaging a double-double. See ever cut from the Mark Matson mold. They've been together a long time. Breidenbach, too strong, and Amac pulls it down. Has proven he can make one, Breidenbach. Only shot 16 of them this year, but he's shooting 44%. So if you're surprised with that FGA, don't be, doesn't shoot a lot of them. Mulcahy he breaks a little personal drought. He did not score in two games last week. Paul Mulcahy. Well, not on this possession, but we anticipated this game being faster, JB, and it's it's all that so far. Well, team shooting 50% from the floor in the early going. Amac exploring off the bounce here into Breidenbach and brings another whistle. So now they each have one personal foul. This is starting five tonight for UW and Cal. Well, perimeter shooting is so important for Cal, JB, to open up the inside for AMAC. So if you get Cohen out there and he's making them, Tyson's making them, that gives AMAC more room to operate. And so an important part of this Cal offense is making threes. AMAC seen two defenders, keeps the pivot foot going. Everything but the bucket as Brooks pulls it down. Wheeler so explosive. You you can't 
You can't expect one guy to stop him. You got to you got to get two, three, four guys back and wall off so that he has to to retreat back. Once he's downhill like he just was, he's either going to score himself or find somebody for a kick out. Now Fardos into the lane, leaning back, couldn't score it. Keontae Kennedy could. Speaking of doing a lot of things, Keontae Kennedy, one of the better on-ball defenders in the league, he's taking the challenge with Wheeler here early. But he fills up the box score. Doesn't score a lot, Kennedy, but does a lot of things to help you win. Keon Brooks Jr. Through a double team, deflected and stolen. Kennedy got the hand on it. Tyson brings it. Wanted Cone in the corner. Good recovery by Moses Wood. Well, right on cue by Kennedy. Getting a hand in the passing lane and getting a turnover. But this is what, he kind of sets you up like he's not going to get all the way to the rim. And then he's got that burst to get by the initial defender. And if no one's there, he's going to do that every time. Tyson, step back two. Wood there for the rebound. You always wonder, do you think he thought it was a two or do you think he got his feet all the way back behind the line? You would assume he thought it was a three. Seen Wheeler do it in transition. Misses a three there. The Huskies off the mark with their first three. I think when your shoes are that bright, you got to know where your toes are at all times. <laughs> Well, the worst thing you can do in that situation is look down because if you look down, you're for sure not going to make the shot. So you just have to hope that whatever you did with the dribble, you got back behind the, the three point line. Brooks dared to pull from the mid range. It didn't fall. Grant Newell's off the cow bench early with the rebounds. Amac against Wood. Feels like he's got the better of this matchup. Came up short. Uh, both teams are wanting to play fast and kind of go on early clock. Not a lot of success here the last few possessions. How about that behind the back? Nice. And the dish. Brooks does the rest for you, Dub. Uh, when you have a burst, it's hard to stay in front of, right? But if you understand change of direction on top of having a burst, it's almost impossible for defenders to stay in front of you. Wheeler that time got by two or three defenders, dropped it off for, Bo for Brooks for the easy dunk. Amac gets a screen, and now Tyson steps back to the line and knocks it down. He is a reliable three-point shooter, 38%. We saw him out here way early before the game working on that. The top two scores in the league trading punches. That's what I was envisioning, JB, coming into this one, was kind of a duel between Brooks and Tyson. Hopefully that manifests itself at some point. Now Tyson's turn. Kennedy at the wing, midway point of the shot clock. Should have shot it. Drive and kick to Newell. If you're the leading scorer in the league and the scouting report's geared to stop you and you get that wide open, Tyson should have let that one fly. Don't have to tell Wood twice. Offensive rebound, Breidenbach. Able to shield off Amac for the two. Well, Breidenbach's going to give you the effort, no doubt. And he's had a couple games here of late where he's had Good production for this Washington team. Amac downhill. And wrenches it with the right hand. They do that a lot where he operates from the top of the key or the elbows. And, and usually he's a facilitator. DHOs, start in actions, pass, follow up with a screen, with a ball screen. That time just wheeled back. No one home for Washington secondary defenders. Catch and shoot. Okay, he. We're long overdue for a media timeout, but no one looks tired. No. We don't need a timeout. <laughs> Seven minutes of uninterrupted action. Cone takes the TV timeout <laughs> with the track. Asking you shall receive. Well, Fardaz Amac, again, another experienced player on this Cal team, takes it to the rim. Cal up one. Uh, but UCLA hung, got down 15, but hung in there and made plays. Mack was big down the stretch. Stefanovic was big down the stretch. So a big win for UCLA on the road. And let's take a look at the road to Vegas. Our Pac-12 standings presented by Las Vegas, home of the Pac-12 tournament. Well, you see some big games tonight. I know it's still early, but Oregon undefeated at Colorado tonight. And then the surging Stanford Cardinal hosting Washington State tonight. 
What do you think? Are the Buffs primed to bring Oregon back to the pack, or is Oregon ready for a trip to Boulder? I think so. And Oregon hasn't done well in Boulder. I think they won there last year, but they have had a long streak of not winning in Boulder. And Colorado's been a little up and down here of late, but I think Colorado's usually good on the Thursday game, the first game of the week in preparation. But that should be a good one tonight. You could say Colorado's been up and down within the same game at times. Yeah, like exactly. Being up 19 here and losing to these Cal Golden Bears. Braxton me in the game for Breidenbach. And Johnson for UW as well. Weak side board tipped out by Newell. So a new clock for the Huskies. There's a look at Anthony Holland. Zone on the out of bounds for Cal. A lot of teams do that. Even if they're advanced, play zone on the baseline out of bounds. Terrific ball movement. Can it produce a shot? Miller still looking. Down to Mia. Braxton Mia with the free throw to follow. Had a bit of a hard time with a Dembona last time out, and that loss to UCLA coming off the bench tonight. Quick impact. Well, the interesting thing about guarding Wheeler is this. You know he has the burst. You know he's got the change of direction. You know he's got all these different arm angle finishes in the paint. And he's not, he's not, he had a game a couple games ago where he went five for five from the three-point line, but doesn't shoot a lot of threes, and he's 29%. So you would think guys would just back off, but I feel like he's made enough where you can't just dare him to shoot it either. And so that puts the defender in a bit of a decision-making thing where you get up just enough for him to use his speed to go by you. Well, he and the Huskies creating offense in the lane. 14 of their points have been in the paint or lack thereof, as the case might be here at Haas Pavilion. Kennedy lines up a triple. What a rebound, nearly ripped down by Newell. But it's over to UW. Well, Kennedy, pretty good look. And then get the sense there's going to be a lot of competition on both boards tonight. It's been that way here in the first eight minutes. Mia off the roll, looking opposite to the corner. Holland, he's a marksman. Talk about contested rebounds, Don, right on cue. Two spill to the floor. Gus Larson tangled with Mia. Here is our beefy moment presented by Old Trapper. Mark Matson led Utah Valley to a win over UW in Seattle in December of 2021. Current Cal center, Fardoz Amak, had 15 and 15 that night for the Wolverines. And what's crazy, if you really think about it, Amak that year average, averaged 15 rebounds a game. Think about that. Like, we're, we're always in this league really celebrating somebody that's getting close to just averaging double figure rebounds. 15 a game? It's incredible. At 6'11", 245, we were there to celebrate his 25th birthday at, was that USC earlier this season? I think so. Well, this one early is about what we expected, right? Up and down, a lot of offense, and tightly contested. Ronnie Brown Jr. wasting no time. Tip rebound over to Wheeler. Speaking of birthdays, he celebrated one yesterday on the road with the Huskies. You really have to pay attention to Wheeler. Like, you can't just get back and, you know, kind of just look around. Like, you have to know where Wheeler is with the ball at all times because he can explode at any time and, and get into the teeth. And if there's no help, no secondary defenders, he's going to make a play. For a moment, I thought you were going to say you really have to pay attention to birthdays. I thought that's where you were going with that. Did you see Wheeler's progress year over year? Are you referring to my birthday on Tuesday? It's in my calendar. Are you an apple pie for birthday celebrations like no. Saviria's? He said, no cake. I want my candles in my apple pie. I usually... I know what you like for your birthday. 
I know. I, I prefer fermented grapes for my birthday <laughs> instead <laughs> of apple pie. <laughs> Mostly of the red variety. That's I right. Know. I know. Cone initiates the Cal offense. Tyson on the roll. Larson wanted to pack it. He did not play at Oregon, but he got a nice shout out from Mark Madsen in that comeback win against Colorado. Oh, just simple screen roll. Mia out of position. I'm not sure what coverage he was in there, but th see, that's that's what a guy like Jalen Tyson does to your defense. When the ball's in his hands, everybody's concerned that he's going to do something or score. So Mia was watching him, and Larson just rolled right to the basket, got himself to the foul line. First foul shot of the night for the Cal Golden Bears. Was enrolled in Penn's Wharton School of Business prior to transferring here to Cal. Paul McKay, he will bring it up. The back court with Corinne Johnson. And Wheeler gets a breather. Anthony Holland sends it back. Now the entry to Mia in deep. Turns left shoulder, couldn't score it. I'd like to see him, JB, just catch and go. No dribble, just catch and elevate. Larson, even though he's almost as tall as Mia, would not get to that release point. Just turn over that left shoulder and put it in. The dribble brought defenders and made it a much tougher shot than it had to be. Larson screening for Brown. He gets it back in the short corner. Eight to shoot. Rodney Brown Jr. with two. Floating from the line. Got it. And squeezes it through. Making something out of nothing. And Rodney Brown really shooting it well. 53% from behind the three-point line. So you play him for that. Makes a play with the dribble inside the line that time. Tyson gets a block, a deflection, and a takeaway. Halfway home here in the first, locked up at 18. Cone driving kick. Tyson, not this time. That one didn't go in, but you know what I like about Tyson, what he does, which is more of a pro thing? Wherever he catches it is where he releases it from on those three-point attempts. Doesn't bring it down, doesn't have to recenter it, doesn't have to put it in the shooting pocket. He will shoot it if the ball's high on the catch. He'll just let it go from there which is a little unusual for a college player. But if you can make it doing that way, it's way more efficient and quicker. And catch Mia on that illegal screen. So he leaves, replaced by the starter, Breidenbach. Just to continue your thought on Tyson, it's not by accident. He is one of the hardest workers that I've observed this season in terms of the hours spent. And he practices that very thing. We watched him do yeah. that from the corner, catching all those different well, if you're release points. If you're talking about jumping up levels, high school to college, college to the NBA, or professional basketball, all it is is about size and speed, and speed being the main thing. So more, if you can get your feet down faster, if you can get your release off quicker, that works better when you jump up levels. And I think Tyson was taught that where he doesn't have to bring it down. It, there's not a lot of motion in his mechanics. But off on the baseline, rotation for Cal. Pays off with a triple. Jalen Celestine. Played well, and his versatility shows. He's, he's come off the bench this year. He started this year. Knocks down his first three tonight. Brooks is back in, playing with Moses Wood. Seven unanswered for Cal. It's been more than a three-minute field goal drought for Washington. We started the broadcast tonight talking about how both of these teams have made strides offensively. Look at what Cal has done under Mark Madsen. Well, and let's give Mark Madsen credit for changing how, the, how they do things. But, but if we're being honest, Mark Fox and the roster construction and all the things that happened here under him, they had to play slower to stay in games. Mark Madsen recruits the portal, brings in higher level players, experienced players, so they can play faster. When you're the lesser team, you want less possessions. When you're the better team, you want more possessions. Washington, likewise, so much more experienced. As of tonight, the roster collectively, 
has about a thousand games of combined college basketball experience now, including from this man, Moses Wood, who misses the corner. Tyson over to Brown. Steps inside the line and steps to the foul line. Well, what you like about Tyson bringing it up, and he's not in the game right now, but you could say the same for Brown, is it allows the shooters to play off the ball. And Tyson's so good at getting by defenders that he can find people like that. Good ball fake by Brown and gets himself to the foul line. But when you have a guy like Tyson that can off the dribble get his own, but then your shooters can play off and don't have to worry about bringing it up. That's even better. I'm trying to stress this about Tyson, too. He leads Cal in steals and assists and is getting more than seven rebounds on a front court that has Fardaz Amak vacuuming mm -hmm. up a lot of those. Does a lot of things to help you win, Tyson. Fills up that box score. Well, little pester pressure off the made free throw. See how different Washington is, JB, without Wheeler in the game? So much different, the dimension he gives them with his explosiveness and ability to get into the paint. You can also see it in the expanded Cal defense. Good pass. On rotation, another missed three. It's been a tough shooting start from distance for Washington. 0 for 8 now. Washington 35% as a team not not poor, but not great But not off to a good start from behind the line tonight Hey, he with a nifty steal now the lob deflected no problem for Keon Brooks jr oh, What a finish what presence of him not to come down knew where the rim was put it over his shoulder with both hands Nice play You know what that's from JB just playing a lot of basketball Tyson on the take, and it falls. The top two scorers in the league going back to back again. I was just getting ready to say the Brooks-Tyson duel is starting to gain some steam here. Brooks on this end off the tip. The wherewithal to know where he's at puts it in, and then Tyson on the other end. Cal up four there early. Pac-12 men's basketball is presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky, what's your beef? And brought to you by MGM Rewards. Earn points on every game-winning celebration. Visit MGMRewards.com for details. And by Las Vegas, the greatest arena on earth. Some now and then for Jalen Brown. Don likes notable alumni. How about wealthy alumni? <laughs> Biggest contract in NBA history right there. Looking at the box score, JB, a couple things stand out. I said earlier that this game is about what we expected. I think a couple things that you mentioned, actually, 0 for 8 for Washington. A little surprised they haven't made a 3 yet. But then the whole point about Cal not turning it over lately, only two turnovers here in the first 12 minutes of this one. So that continues for Cal. Turnover margin, the determining factor for the Golden Bear. Minus four in losses, almost plus three in mm -hmm. wins. That's on a per game basis. So that's like a seven turnover spread, wins and losses. Feels like the more they play through this man, Tyson, the more ball secure they are in the half court. No doubt. Largest lead for either team at Cal drops back into that zone again. Token pressure and then back to this 2-3. With Wheeler back on the floor, orchestrating the offense for Washington. Let's see how Washington attacks this. Warren Johnson drives a gap. Wheeler touch pass. Eight to shoots. Out to the corner. Cal locked in defensively. They get another stop. Maintaining the handle, leaning in to draw two free throws. First, first time we've seen Kennedy handle in the ball screen tonight. It's himself to the foul line. I forgot to ask him if he still needs to wear that mask, or is he one of those guys that wore it and played well the first time, so now it's staying for, for the rest of the season at least. 
Well, he's wearing a lot of equipment. And part of it has to do with the uh, non-shooting hand injury that cost him the first seven games. Mm -hmm. Then the busted nose. Did he ever burst onto the scene, though? I was here for that debut and a win against Santa Clara. Then he goes on the road to Hinkle Fieldhouse. Yikes, we're just going to keep moving over the top of that one. <laughs> and scored 20 points in his first Cal road trip at Butler. JB, that is the first. That was the mask. In the history of let's move on off of a missed free throw. <laughs> the you mass, just made history. The mask slipped. It obscured his vision momentarily. Seven minutes to go first half. Bears by six. Wheeler off the ball fake. The drought continues from distance for the Huskies. But they'll get it back on a foul. Well, Cal in the bonus, only the 16 foul for Cal, so Washington on the next foul will be at the line. There's Brooks ISO here, he's got to take him. Rip through on AMAC, who stays in front. Forces a tough fall away jump. That's off the Brooks baseline connects. out of bounds, so that's not like a half court set. But if they can get that matchup, I'd like to see Brooks start his dribble, back him up, and then ISO AMAC. He's got half of the Washington total. AMAC spins to the baseline, turns away from the second defender. Tyson flips mm. it up and in. Wow. Tough shot, offhand tough shot. Now he's in double figures. Johnson out to the perimeter. Wood goes low to get it, but still the Huskies can't find a three. They've missed their first 10. Tyson pulls front iron. A little flat on that one. Holland, there it is. The first from distance timeout, Mark Madsen. Up and down we go. Back to a one possession deficit for the Huskies who are by reputation a second half team. Now Tyson's so strong, defenders bounce off of him. Contact doesn't bother him. Goes to the left hand to score. See how he tucked that? Good offensive players tuck it so it can't get stripped out of there by the defender. And then just a rhythm three for Holland. So we showed you the Cal offensive improvement. How about what the Huskies have done year over year? I think the biggest thing for me in that is their three-point shooting. Last year, 31%, not very good. But the leader in that is Keon Brooks. We talked about that earlier, how he has improved his three-point shooting. So no surprise, the team three-point shooting percentage has improved. Second in scoring, free throws attempted. Also second in the league in blocks. They're still missing some rim protection with Frank Kepnong, who's on the trip. Seems like he's getting closer to returning to Mike Hopkins rotation. Yeah, they need him. Their record with and without him is really noticeable. The wins when he's in there versus when he's not. Ten to shoot. Cone gets Brooks on the switch, gets to the left side, and buries it. Uh, again, you have to close out to Cone. You cannot let him get started from behind the three-point line, and if you do, he's got the quickness to get by you. Just like this guy with the ball. And Kennedy taking the challenge defensively for Cal. He doesn't miss those little flips very often. I mean, you win that round on defense, and still the Huskies come away with the hoop. Corin Johnson cleaning up. Wheeler is so good at driving, keeping the ball in his left hand, not getting the right hand on it, and just putting it up off the window. Rarely misses those. Cohen enters. It's swiped away. Brooks doing it on defense. Now a congested transition. Run to the rim, but a foul on Cal. Keon Brooks very good and has been since he's been at Washington at getting to the foul line. I think, you know, in watching him, the numbers really don't say this, but to me in watching him individually play, that was a big weapon for him was he wanted to get fouled, wanted to get to the foul line. I think in large part because he didn't trust his three-point shot. And I think now that he's a willing three-point shooter, 
he doesn't have to go to let me try and get fouled on this play anymore. It's a good point and remains a good foul shooter. He's got 24 points and 10 rebounds in both of his career games against Cal. Trying to do it again here tonight in a series that is split completely down the middle. Dead even all time, 87 wins for each program. Also tied 10 10 in the Pac 12 era. I saw that this morning, I couldn't believe it. Rejected for all this time, it's tied. Pull up, Tyson, too strong. So a chance for Washington to move back in front. Cal giving Washington different looks defensively. Wheeler turns it over. Kennedy got tugged and then fouled on the way to the rim. Uh, See the way he sat on that left hand yeah. in the half court? That's what Kennedy does, though. He's very good at anticipating, jumping passing lanes, and then getting out in transition. Seems like every time I'm here, he has two or three a game. A play's just like this. Anticipates when that pass is going to go. Takes off the other way. Kennedy, a perfectly capable foul shooter, 66% on the season. But let's see if that air ball starts to weigh on him a bit. Well, the one he airballed went right, and that second one went right as well. It hit the rim, but was far right. Holland, an extra opportunity on the offensive glass. Well, same thing I was talking to earlier about when you pay attention to certain guys so much, other guys can can do things. Holland for this for the second time sneaks in there for an offensive rebound. For someone who is predominantly a three point mm -hmm. shooter through the non conference giving the Huskies more Celestine this badly Wheeler hits the gas finds wood wanted to get it to Brooks pulled it back lost it on the crossover that's Cone stayed in front Celestine will challenge Celestine will score. I thought Moses Wood was going to go try and get that, but Celestine changed gears on that a little bit. Didn't go full speed, slowed up just enough and finished the play. Johnson flings it back. Wood. Bam. Moses Wood breaks the ice. Uh, easy pick and pop there and a blown coverage by Cal because you cannot leave Moses Wood out there that open. He's going to make those. Now two of 13 from behind the arc as a team. And still up. Usually a team goes two for 13 and a half. They're down. Both teams in the bonus. So we'll be at the foul line when we come back as Wheeler reaches in. While Don hits the concession stand, we invite you to stick around for the halftime report presented by Fubo. We'll take a look at how Mark Madsen has changed the culture at Cal. And look at the Pac-12 scoreboard on a busy night of Pac-12 hoops. What, what would you get on that list if you if you strode up to IBs at halftime? Yes, per usual, all of it. I haven't had a hot dog since Nam, but probably the cheesesteak I would go with. Maybe the loaded nachos. Definitely a milkshake. Saw those earlier. Let's hope that cheesesteak sandwich is like true to size on the on the photo board representation there. No offense to the Cal Snack Shack, but I'm sure it's no Pats. There you go. Got a real issue at the foul line for Kennedy and Cal as you take a look at some of the other fare from around the arena here at Haas. Such a valuable component. And that second one falls. Good for him. Last time I was up at UW, Keon Brooks, who's a who's a good free throw shooter, similar thing. Went five for 13, five for 12, or five for 13 from the free throw lines. Sometimes when you miss those first couple, it gets in your head the rest of the game. Hopefully not for Kennedy. Brooks with his back to Tyson. 12 to shoot. Leans in, brings the whistle, drains the two. Well, NBA feel right here. Uh, we've all I was just getting ready to say we all know the new rule that if you sweep through it can still be a foul but it's not a shooting foul. 
And so Brooks has obviously watched that, but look how tight Tyson is. He wasn't vertical. If that arm was straight up, it wouldn't have been a foul, but because it was at an angle, Brooks was able to create that contact. The surprising part is he made the shot. Sixteen and counting already for Keon Brooks Jr., who trails only Jalen Tyson of Cal for the most 20-point games in the Pac-12 this season. Well, Eleven. Typically, and we've seen it already this year, if you're going to win on the road in the Pac-12, your big guns got to show up. And right now, Brooks is showing up. Newell with some separation missed the jumper. Not a lot of success for Pac-12 road teams this year so far. Brooks feeling it. It spins out. Kennedy's there for the defensive board. That was a bit of, bit of a heat checker, wasn't it? Sure was. He'd earned it. Newell's got a mismatch. Cal couldn't find him. He's got Wheeler behind he's him defensively. Got a, he's got a call for the ball. He came across, but didn't look like he wanted it. You got to act like you want it. You got Wheeler, the smaller guy behind you. Giving away a full foot. Exactly. Six nine against five nine there. Now a short clock. Brown could not create. Tyson, no reset. He brings the whistle. These two exchanging similar styles of play. Scoring, fouling, free throws, you name it. Uh, you know I like offense, JB. What I would consider is let's just go clear out the right side every time for Tyson and Brooks, back and forth. Well, to get guys could really score. To get two Cal free throws for Tyson out of this is, is a better result than Cal had earned in that half-court set. Now a stoppage from our crew. I think Mike Hopkins wondering if there was a straight elbow on the way up there. So back to the monitor. That's been a while. Glad we're back. Again, with the clock running out, Tyson goes up, but but that's his natural shooting motion. And isn't Brooks in his? He didn't extend it. He didn't extend it. That's his normal shooting motion. He, he's going up, not out, to shoot that shot. So if Keon Brooks is going to get too close, sorry, that's what happens. So oh. I would be really surprised if this was anything other than nothing, just the foul. This angle shows the shot clock there. Other than going yeah. left-handed sky hook, how else was he supposed to get that up? He was already in a shooting motion. And Brooks closed out too close. He got hit in the face, unfortunately. For now, it's Brooks's second personal foul. And Tyson on 10 points will be heading to the foul line. One more angle. You would know if he was trying to elbow him in the face, the angle of the elbow would be different. It would be going towards the basket, not going up. Watch the head coach of the Huskies from the hash. He saw it all the way. Well, I'm sure Coach Hobbs saw it the way he saw it. But if we're going to react to coaches asking for certain things and going to the monitor, it's going to make for long games around here. Because I don't think they were going to even look at it until Mike Hopkins said something. Call on the floor confirmed. It's a common foul and Tyson really? to the strike. Tyson is the first Cal player to score 20 or more in six straight games since Ed Gray in 97. He did it in 11 in a row. Well on his way to making it seven straight. Uh, hard to take Tyson out of the game. Plays heavy minutes, but he affects the game so much. Got to keep him on the floor. Here's the match Here we you go. wanted at the right wing. Exactly. Brooks, step back. Good defense, Tyson. Made Shot you want. Fade away 17 footer from Brooks, which he can make, but a tougher shot for him. Tyson, chance to finish two for one at the end of the half. Back tap, save. Can still get a two for one out of it. 
I think you just get best available. Forget about the two for one. Brown keeps the dribble. Turn it over. See if the Huskies want the last they do. That's they, the rare time you'll see Wheeler slam well, on the brakes. He only slammed on the brakes because Mike Hopkins was screaming at him to slam on the brakes. He was going to go. Wheeler between the legs four times. Trying to burst past Brown. Nice. Touch pass. Corner. Holland. Good yes. Offense. Good offense set up by Wheeler. The one more pass. In the made three. A brutal three point shooting half for the Huskies ends with that make and a five point lead. Uh, entertaining first half, and we knew the two stars of the game coming in would show up Tyson and Keon Brooks, but the made three by Holland puts watching it up five going into halftime. Should be a really good second half. 16 for Brooks, a dozen for Tyson. It's halftime here in Berkeley with Washington on the road on top by five. And a reminder that after the break, it's the halftime report presented by Fubo. Our scoring leaders presented by Liberty Mutual Insurance as expected Brooks for UW Tyson for Cal. I think two names you see Amac on there but only four points for him. He's our second leading score at 15 a night for Cal. Severe Wheeler only two points in that first half so I expect him to get going with more scoring in the second half especially if they start to load towards Keon Brooks in the second in this second half. First of a three game homestand for Tyson and Cal. Game two of a three game road trip through the state of California for the Huskies of Washington. Xavier Wheeler with the basketball here. Cal back to man to man to start the second half. Wheeler off the crossover. Look at the ball movement to tee up Brooks. Couldn't pay it off with a three. Amac has the first rebound of the second half. You're right, JB. The ball movement for Washington's been really good. Imagine if they were shooting threes at a high clip because they're getting good looks. Amac rattles off. Not just the fact that they're willing to move it, but the way they're moving yeah. it with some flair. Hard drive to the baseline. Now back out to Wheeler. He'll trigger the triple. Thought we'd hear from him here in the second half from a point production standpoint. Sub 30% from behind the arc, but a willing and capable shooter from distance. I think the more he gets comfortable in this offense, that, that number is going to go up that 29%. As I mentioned earlier, five for five in a game a couple games ago. Fardos with a nice five. Tyson gets his easiest two of the night. You're right, that was his easiest two of the night. He has made some tough shots. 14 for him, 16 going the other way for Brooks. Okay, he at the left wing. Brooks facing up over Amac. That's that matchup again I was talking about in the first half. Got him on the switch and just looked at him, jab over the top 15 footer. Cohen into the lane, lost the handle. Wilhelm Breidenbach got the start again here in the second half with the basketball at the top. Travel. Eighth turnover for Washington. Indecision for Breidenbach. Took it down the lane with the with the intent to score. Got cut off and moved, shuffled his feet before he found Mulcahy in the corners. You take a look at the second half numbers any updated explanation for why that might be so pronounced no <laughs> statistical anomaly yeah i mean it's one of those things most teams if you look at the numbers the, the numbers aren't similar between first and second half they're not as drastic as those but some teams are first half teams some teams are second half teams you see the gift of Amac as a rebounder. To, not just his size and his strength, but having a sense of where that's going to fall out and how to get there to well, the second side. The other thing, too, the long arms. He's got really long arms. He's not an above-the-rim guy, high-flyer athleticism, but those long arms and his catch radius allows him to go get balls out of his area that most guys can't get. Catch radius, I like it. Yeah. 
figure I'm with a football guy. I might as well throw some in there. <laughs> Tyson wheels to the baseline, then spins off of it. Everything but the bucket. Would have been easier for him to go left hand finish there. Come back across your body to the right makes it a harder shot. Wheeler. Wheeling and dealing came up empty. But UW gets a new possession. Usually Amax so good at going up and getting those rebounds and securing it. Lost that one out of bounds. Paul McKay, he just sent it in. He gets it right back from Breidenbach. Wood trying to post up Cone on that baseline out of bounds. What a big lift Wilhelm Breidenbach has been. He's already had a career high 15 points in league play at Utah. Gets the start tonight and building the Washington lead out to 11. Uh, Washington starting to hit threes now and building a double digit lead. Cal got a regroup down 11. Welcome back to Pac-12 Basketball presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. UW extending its lead to the largest tonight, 48-37. Three minutes into our second half, it's time for a new game. Ready, Don McLean? We have a new game. David Feldman never leaves you without a new challenge. Did you know they went to Cal? How about Gregory Peck? Leave it to Beaver. 0 for 2 for me. John Cho from Harold in uh, Harold and Kumar. Chris Pine, that's a recognizable face. Yes. Star Trek, Wonder Woman. And Solomon Hughes from uh, Winning Time. Played Kareem. See, David Feldman knows me. We don't, although he did play at Cal, he's not known for his basketball playing. We like the entertainment, the artists, the music people. We know who played sports at our schools. <laughs> But how about those who can people. do both, who can play sports and then go? Starring an HBO series. Fardaz Amak and Cohn have some work to do. That's a good start from the you top. You know what, JB, I was just getting ready to say, he's the guy that needs to get going here. Had five in the first half, but he can, he can bring them back quickly with his ability to knock down threes. That was a tough off the, dri off the dribble handoff, gets his feet down. And knocks that one down. Let's see if it gives Cal a lift. Well, we know about Cal, whether it's plus 20 or minus 20, they yeah. are never out of no. a game, and the game is never secure in their hands. Washington better understand that. Four left. Brooks turns the corner and brings the whistle. A late foul by Celestine on that contest. Uh, I think Keon Brooks is seeing what I noticed in the first half, that when he gets that AMAC matchup, he's got to go to work. And that time, it wasn't the pull-up game or mid-game. He just went right by him and got fouled by the second defender. Second on Jalen Celestine, sending Brooks back to the foul line. Huskies a perfect seven of seven from the strike tonight. So Brooks has four of them. That's the basket, not me. <laughs> Just ask Keontae Kennedy from the first half. That's right. So you're saying it's that basket that they're shooting free throws at. Or the Cal band. It could be any number of things, but not because I mentioned their seven for seven start. Here comes Cone. Again, they want it. They got it. Here we go. And again, Cone's one of those guys. You let him see a couple go through. He's hard to turn off. Washington's got to adjust to that. That was the exact same action, exact same shot. Knocked it down. Now a steal from Tyson. Splitting two defenders. I oh, got all the way home, but couldn't finish. Got to get to the board on that. That's such a hard shot straight in. Brooks. Tide turning here a little bit for Cal. You can sense it with those made threes from Cone. Now in deep. We'll have to earn it at the line as Wheeler perplexed he got underneath. Uh, again, we talked about it in the first half. Small in stature, but gets his feet down so fast. Knocks that in. Cal making a run. 
incredibly good Friday of women's basketball coming your way tomorrow on Pac-12 Network. A top five collision in Colorado between UCLA and the Buffs. And then Oregon and Stanford from the farm. The Cardinal with a top 10 national ranking. But the headline there, Tara Vanderveer has a chance to be the winningest coach in college basketball by the end of the weekend. A lot of her uh, former Stanford players prepared to come back and salute her. You can see just one shy of Coach K with Gino Oriema still going as well for Connecticut. The women's weekend opens tomorrow. As for the men, 15.31 to go in our second half, and we will resume at the line. Uh, it looked like the game was getting away from Cal there for a second when Washington went up 11, but a, a quick answer from Jalen Cohn can add to it here to cut it to four. Pac-12 leader in three-point makes. Also top 25 in the country in makes per game. He's run cold a little bit, say the last month or so. But back home here at Haas Pavilion. I think that's his scouting report, JB. Once we get into league play, teams know what's coming. And they have they have defense for it. And so if you have a guy like Cohn that you want to get threes off, you got to change up to get him more looks. Wheeler sprays it out. Mulcahy could not connect. One and done for UW. It was an 11 point advantage. Now Cal can bring it back to a one possession game. Cone run off the line. Throws down low, they get a dunk instead. So what happened? Now they're concerned about Cone coming off the action, lighting threes. That brings the defense out. Amac right to the front of the rim. Easy dunk. Only six points for Fardons, but he's been impactful at both ends, per usual. Wheeler likes the three. A good answer from Wheeler. And we speculated at halftime, him with only two points at halftime, that he would come out looking to score. And he has here in the second half. Tyson rocking the crossover. Good defense, Mulcahy. Amen. Second chance opportunity for Fardaz Amak. Are the two guys we thought, again, Wheeler and Amak would be more of a factor from a point standpoint here in the second half. And Brooks feeling he had to go get one. Instead, empty handed. Celestine, Fardaz, another dunk. Timeout, Mike Hopkins. Uh, you mentioned it, JB. This Cal team is never out of it. They could be down big double digits and come back. They're coming back again here tonight. Amac more involved here in the second half, whether he's scoring or facilitating. They've come all the way back to make it a two-point game. Well, now into double figures, 10 points, six rebounds, four assists for Amac. UW still looking to get back in the lane where they found well, so much success in the first half. I think you and I both agreed, and we talked about it right off the top, how competitive we thought this game would be, two similar teams. So I was a little surprised that Washington got out double digits here early in the second half, but not surprised that it's a two-point game with 13.49 to go. You double go to Braxton Mia here to try and cool off Amac. And Mia, only three minutes and 17 seconds in that first half, but picked up two fouls. That's probably why the minutes were so low. Xavier Wheeler, everything but the hoop. On the cleanup, Keon Brooks Jr. 21 and rolling. It's unbelievable how fast Wheeler gets into fourth gear. And he just turns it on and blows by everybody. And wouldn't you follow him to the rack? Like a 5'9 driving guard yeah. just to scrap for offensive rebounds? He's a perfect candidate at his size for chase down blocks. Corin Johnson denied. Tyson on the recovery. Cone on the counter. Pull up three, swiped by Wheeler. He asked for chase down blocks, you get two in a row. Ask for something else, Don, quick. Made three. 
<laughs> <Tenia. Tenia. laughs> Off the wood, Miss Lane. Uh, again, entertaining basketball, both of these teams. Get up and down, make plays. Game's starting to pick up again here now. UW in zone here. Nia on that back line, front of the rim. Tyson pulls up from the mid range. Nia goes to get it. Uh, the throw ahead pass, and Tyson doesn't quit on it. Smartly try, blocks it with his left and not his right. Probably would have fouled him with the right, and then Wheeler from behind blocks the cone three. Student section behind us, I think, just caught a replay and thought that should have been Cal basketball. Brooks with it instead, and a six-point lead. Wood fouled as a three-point shooter. A freshman mistake by Brown. Your team's making a run, stabilize the game, crowds into it, can't foul a three-point shooter. Let's take a look. It's just the thing, look, when you're playing, you're not thinking, you're just reacting. Game of basketball is reactionary, right? But when you have a guy like Wood, you think, I got to get out there, but you're not going to block the jump shot. And that's the thing that's got to be frustrating for coaches is you don't need to block the shot. Second glance, I thought that was a good call, too, in terms of his yeah. foot being in the landing area yeah. for Wood. It's just once we get into conference play, the attention to detail in these little things could end up deciding the game. Especially when Wood is a superb foul right. shooter. Now it's back to a nine point game. Got to get it to AMAC at that foul line. Cohn finally does. Return pass. Again, there you go. Cone for Good three. Offense. Huskies dodge one. Good tip by Wood. You see that? Looked like AMAC was going to get the offensive rebound, and Wood tipped it out of there. Wheeler. How? How does he even get that up? He swings that left arm way out and then puts it way up in the air. Missed a couple tonight. Like I said in the first half, he usually doesn't miss those. With some English, Grant Newell. Good finish using the basket as a shield goes to the other side. His career best game came in Seattle against these Huskies. Kennedy shooting the gap again. He's ditched the mask. Yeah, I was going to say, breaking news. No mask. Grant Newell scored 21 points last January at UW. Seen some familiar purple. Good results again. Pac-12 Men's Basketball is presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. What's your beef? And brought to you by Columbia, the official apparel partner of the Pac-12. Good timing for DeJounte Murray to make an appearance. Kudos to David Feldman, apparently anticipating his first career buzzer-beating game winner against the Orlando Magic last night. Well, you saw when he was a freshman, and, and the numbers weren't big for him that freshman year. But just the measurables of him, he looked like an NBA guard. He ended up going late first round, but has turned into a very, very good NBA player. And hit that shot over Markel Fultz. Yeah, another one and done at UW. Approaching the 11 minute mark here at Haas Pavilion. Huskies on the high side by seven. Wheeler trying to get it down to Mia. Braxton Mia. Misses out of the stoppage, a rebound to Kennedy. Good look, though. Took his time, took the dribble, got on balance, just didn't make it. Look at Wheeler on Cone now. They know they cannot let Cone keep going from behind the three-point line. And especially with Tyson off the floor for the time being, their defensive focus on this man with the basketball. Still, he gets free. <laughs> and buries another. Uh, blown coverage in that ball screen action. 
He came off that thing clean. He's going to make that every time. Four of six from distance. Wheeler. Off oh, window. the answer off glass. There's no pictures in the box score, JB. I was just thinking those count the same, those last two shots. Cone wants another. Ooh, he should have lit that one. Kennedy instead. A tough two from the baseline. Now back and forth we go offensively. This is exactly what we expected. Wheeler turns it over. It's the only thing you would say about Xavier Wheeler is the turnovers. Gets loose with it sometimes, but the way he plays and the speed at which he plays with, it's almost impossible for him not to have some turnovers. Some of the territories he gets to right. as well. You almost have to take some of the exactly. bad with the good. Tenth turnover tonight for Washington. Tyson back in for Cal. Be surprised if he didn't touch it on this possession. Comes to get it from Larson. Throws to the post. A tie-up and the arrow favoring Cal. Uh, Larson didn't see it, but he had Tyson relocating back to the corner. He would have been wide open. He may not have seen it, but I think his head coach did because he goes right back to Fardaz <laughs> Amak in this moment, trailing by five. Uh, Amax, such a willing passer. How many assists does he have tonight? Four. Tyson gets downhill. On the putback, Grant Newell soaring to the rim. Could this be a breakout game for Grant Newell? A couple confident plays here in the second half. Okay, he backing down Cone. Opposite block, Mia. That interior passing stuff, JB, is so difficult, and rarely do you get stuff out of that. Like, Mulcahy should have been looking out to create more space. If you interior, you make interior passes like that, everything's jammed up in the paint. You're probably not going to get a good shot anyway. You can always go out and then go back in. I had to call it foul there as Jalen Cohn knocked Wood out. May not have been much physicality, but enough to knock him off balance putting the official in a spot. Uh, 8.58 to go. Neither team in the bonus yet. Corin Johnson here with the ball. Gets the screen from Wood. Six to shoot. Johnson again. Mia from the elbow. A wild shot goes begging. Huskies get it back. Job by Mulcahy getting an extra possession. See Wood run after that. He knew he missed it. Chance for Cone to tie it. Nice job by Mia being up that time. Diffused Cone from turning the corner and attempting that three. Newell. And a rebounding foul on Tyson on the weak side. So after the Bears trailed by as many as 11, that look to bring them back to level at 62. Uh, still a one possession game with eight plus to go. Long way to go here. Let's see if Anthony Holland can come in and affect the game in the second half like he did in the first. Corin Johnson misses a three. One and done for you, Doug. This is Brown with the basketball for Cal. Amac rolling. Under control to the baseline. And to the foul line next. With 7.46 remaining, we'll take our under eight timeout here. Fardaz Amac and the Cal Golden Bears hosting the Huskies.
Welcome back to Berkeley, and we take a look at our game notes brought to you by MGM Rewards. Washington and Cal meeting for the first time this season. A little surprising there at the bottom, the second chance points for Washington. Cal, a pretty good rebounding team. But Washington's taken advantage of long rebounds, 50-50 balls, and made some shots off of that. And Tyson, you feel like it's nothing Washington's changed in the second half. He's just missed some shots that he was making in the first half. But if Cal's going to win this game, Jalen Tyson is going to be have to be a factor in the last 746. First of two for Fardaz Amac as we resume. The Huskies have won five straight in this series and six of the last seven. Series that, as we mentioned, the first half is split perfectly even all time and in the Pac-12 era. Xavier Wheeler here, midway point of the shot clock. Another different look, zone look, matchup principles looks like. Brooks in the teeth of that zone, falling away. Cal made a miss. Cal can take the lead here, believe it or not. Brown picks up the dribble with 12. So where Tyson's just going to have to make something happen. Fardos, a little shot put to the rim. And weak side, they catch a rebounding foul on the Huskies. Okay, he trying to keep Newell off the glass, and that's where Grant Newell has been a problem for UW. That off arm. Okay, he used to try and hold him off. So a new 20 for Cal as they send it in from the baseline. Amak to tie it up. He's got it from down 11. Cal back to level. They've just dug this one out, JB. It hasn't been one thing. They've just stayed with it. Starting to make some shots here of late. Gotten it back tied. In time, Washington has not. They've only made one of their last seven. A deflection in the half court. UW trying to snap a near four-minute drought. You see Wheeler and Brooks and some ball screen here. Make Cal's defense make some decisions. He had to go a long way to get that look. Contested and missed. Uh, is Washington's lack of offense here the last few minutes affecting their defense? Tyson hangs but cannot hit. Udum fighting for that rebound, controlled by Mia. The game's definitely slowed down here the last few minutes, become more of a half court game. Wheeler out to Holland. Not this time. As Amat goes up to clear it. Five minutes without a score for Washington. They've squandered an 11 point lead. Kennedy to move in front. Cal on the high side. Unexpected from Kennedy. 26% on the season from behind the line. A big one there. 10 unanswered for Mark Madsen and company. You know what Keontae Kennedy in invented this summer? A new nickname for this place. The Haas of Pain. I like it. I'm surprised you didn't come up with that earlier, JB. Looking to improve to six and four at home. Well, I'll tell you this. The crowd and especially the student section behind us, I think has really helped this Cal team tonight. When they got back into it, they, they kind of built that momentum and they were loud and getting them into it. Now let me ask, because this Golden Bears group has not been known for their defense so far this season, but the shooting struggle that Washington's having, is any of that due to what Cal's doing defensively? I think so, but I also think it snowballed on Washington a little bit. Offense was easier in the set, in the first half, and now they've, they've missed some shots, and Brooks of late hasn't made any shots, and I think it's made them you know, start to press a little bit, knowing A, that you're losing the lead, and B, that you've missed multiple shots in a row. Couple of two and four teams in conference play. 
Huskies will go to Stanford next. Cal will play host to Washington State on Saturday here on Pac-12 Network. Uh, the, the other thing that sticks out to me about this, what's happening right now, is the veteran players Cal has. Kennedy, Tyson, Amac. they have veteran guys. I mean, they're doing this and got the lead back. Cohen wasn't even on the floor. Take a look at their scoring leaders. How about going the other direction for Washington? You just called for some more ball screen action for the top two I for you, Doug? I just think with Wheeler and his ability to, to get out of ball screens and get downhill into the lane, and then you got Brooks on the pop or the roll. Your two best players should be involved in the action. Breidenbach down to Wood. Skip to the corner. Good Collins. Good look, good hit for the Huskies. Well, if that was the play design, which it looks like it might have been, terrific play call by Mike Hopkins and Holland. Knocks down a big three. Where would they be without him tonight? Amac on the lob, collects and scores. And one. Well, you just see Amac. I mentioned the long arms in the first half. He just, his release point is higher than everybody that's on the floor for Washington. They can't get to it. That's one of those you just either let him go and lay it in or you grab his arm and don't let him get it up on the on the backboard. It's a double double tonight for Fardon's Amac because what, of course what, it is. It's yeah, Thursday night new? in Berkeley. Yeah, what's new? 55 career, 11 this season. Now you really got to get Brooks involved. If they're going to play zone, get him at that foul line. Holland with a wild tip. Huskies still have a chance at it, but it goes over to Cal. Holland didn't need to back tap that. He should have just brought it down and reset. So with that miss, Brooks still has not made a basket since 1336 here in the second half. Almost nine or nine minutes. Four minute mark back in the hands of Cone. Tend to shoot for Cal with Holland defending. Cone pulls off the bounce. Mm. A rebound there for Wood. Place would have gone bananas if that got in. Extra pass to the corner. Relocation dribble. Not this time for Holland. On the re tee in front of his bench. 0 oh for 2 on the trip. And Tyson snags the ball. Cal has rallied from down 11 to in front by three. Hoping to see the Cal Golden Bears get their third league win. Uh, this has been ad as advertised. Back and forth, looked like Cal was out of it, down double digits, come back and got in the lead. But a one possession game, 3.42 to go. How much else we can ask for? Congratulations, Jed Fish and the Huskies. While we're thinking of it, before we put football behind us for the final four minutes, here's Tyson with the basketball and a three-point lead. Cone down to Amac. No hesitation from Fardaz. Amac in a bad angle. Had to go back across his body to square for that one. Tough shot. Made it look easy. A whistle as Wheeler drives. Kennedy wanted the charge. And still only the 16 foul for Cal, so no free throws yet for Washington. Uh, Amac knows the smaller wood. Can't get up and block that, so no hesitation. UW has only hit one of its last 10 shots. Newell fighting through the screen gets into Wood. And so if you're struggling from the floor, this is a gift to get into the bonus with 3.08 remaining. Got to be smart these last three minutes. And a lot of times, and we talk about this all the time, guarding without fouling to close out the game. 
May have fouled the best free throw shooter in the gym. Mm -hmm. Easy now. Second bell. At least the only one not wearing a tie. <laughs> Get Washington going sometimes when you see it go through. Interesting to see where Cal goes here. Tyson bringing it up. Cone off the ball. Wheeler on him. Tyson attacks baseline. That is an offensive foul. So a block at one end and free throws for Wood. Now an offensive foul as Wood hits the deck. That call is a really tough call. And that's a tough call. The cow collectively trying to compose itself mm -hmm. on defense up three. He's still got the lead. So again, can they can they get stops down the stretch here last three minutes without putting U Dub on the line? Deflected. He wanted to put it in the hands of Brooks, who's still the leading scorer with 21. Uh, worth mentioning, JB, with only 2.39 to go. Washington with one timeout, Cal with two. This would be a good situation to call one, but you only have one left. Late shot clock. Bucket would go a long way here for Washington. Wheeler, kick to the corner. Holland. Could not hit it. Back tap. Huskies have it. Wheeler in deep. Now Wood for three. Need to be in such a hurry there. I felt like that shot was a little rushed from Wood. You had plenty of time. It's only a one possession game. It's not like you're down. Big. They've missed 11 of their last 12 shots, allowing Cal to call all the way back from down 11. Tyson for three. Splashdown. His first bucket in a while, but the biggest bucket of the game so far for Cal. Go back up six. Wheeler, so good. Off that little head fake. Flips it up and in. Timeout. Can't stay in front of him. Singled up, you're probably not going to stay in front of Wheeler. So then it becomes how much pressure on your backline defense. Tyson with that big three and then impossible to stay in front of a guy that quick. And you mentioned that last time out for Coach Hopkins. He spends it here to set up this defensive stand under two minutes to go. Let's see if it comes into play down the stretch. He needs a timeout. They do have the arrow on a tie-up. Both teams in the bonus. And you have to understand that as a player, especially if you get late shot clock. Let's not take take a, a tough shot, perimeter shot, when I could put my head down, potentially get the whistle at the end of the shot clock. Are you hunting anything specific if you're Cal on offense, or are you just trusting your, your big guns here in the moment? Tyson's going to touch it for sure. But I think I'm running some action for Cone to try and get loose. Get a three. He's had a huge second half. I think Kennedy might be cramping. You see the late substitute with Roddy Brown Jr. at the scores table. I think you're right. And disappearing into the corner and going back into the tunnel, actually. Keontae Kennedy off the floor now. So it's up to Rodney Brown Jr. to send it in. That timeout allowing Washington to set up its press. Mm -hmm. Looking for a turnover here. Not. Not ready to lengthen the game yet and put them on the foul line. What an asset to have your five man be able to dribble it the length of the floor to break the time. Especially, off. yeah, especially against the press. Because the opposition loads up on the guards. Cone with 10. And Corin Johnson defending. Jalen Cone between the legs. Out to Brown with two. There's the stop they needed and the possession to go with it. Actually, not a bad look 
for Brown at the end of the shot clock. Good defense by Washington to force them into a late shot clock attempt. Playing with four fouls, Wilhelm Breidenbach back in for Mike Hopkins. I think Cal pushing up here just to try and make Washington use some of the shot clock before they get into their half court set, knowing that they don't have a timeout. Settle into his own. Wheeler attacks, turns the corner. Slicing Brooks, blocked by Amac. No reset. A scramble here. Huskies have it. Wheeler off the mark. Loose ball rebound. Saved in the hands of Cone. I don't think he foul yet. Four point lead in the ball, 50 seconds to go. Cal looking for its third Pac 12 victory. Especially now that you've let it get down. You either foul immediately, or if it gets to that point, you just you got to get a stop at that point. Especially when you foul an 80% foul exactly. shooter. And then Jalen Tyson. Working on a 17-point night, three for three at the line. One and one. Different than the double bonus. 43 seconds to go up six. Spins wow. out. Huskies with plenty of hope. Wood. Good ball fake. Let the defender fly by. Couldn't pay it off. Newell with a massive rebound for the Bears. Well, and a good tie up by Washington. They mentioned they do have the arrow. You go in there looking to tie up, and a lot of times you foul, but they got it and they have the possession arrow. Good poise by Wood. A lot of guys would try and quick trigger that thing and just get it off. Got the ball fake, got him in the air, just didn't make it. Now forces his way to the foul line. Not a shooting foul, a one and one upcoming. Fourth on Brown Jr. there. Wood earns a second. He's got a chance to be the fourth Husky so to reach double figures. Here's the decision you have to make if you're Washington. Say he makes it, you're down two. But there's only a 2.7 differential. So realistically, Washington could take it all the way down and throw it out of bounds. Is 2.7 enough for you to score? Probably have to go the length of the floor. So it'll be interesting to see what Mike Hopkins does. I'm assuming he's going to lengthen the game. So. Wood makes the free throw, you set up your pressure, you go for a turnover, maybe multiple tries at a turnover, and then foul, you know, giving yourself enough time, depending upon the free throws, to come down and score at and the like other that end. that 20-second yeah. range if it comes to that, if Cal is able to break your press successfully. A reminder that coming up, Isaac Jones and Washington State take on Stanford. How about Stanford with a win tonight? Sole possession of second place for the Cardinal. Oh, that would put them at five and two conference record. But obviously that strategy is predicated on Wood making this free throw. And that changes things too. You'd only need a two to send this thing to overtime, assuming Cal missed free throws. He got it. Here's the press. Cal with one timeout in case they can't get it inbound. All five on the baseline in the hands of Rodney Brown Jr. into Cone. I think they wanted foul. that trap in the corner, but give the foul instead as he spins out of it. Well, you had him, though. If, if the ball gets inbounded that deep on the court, like towards your own baseline, there's a good chance you could force a turnover there. A little surprised they went for so, such a quick foul on this. Kind of had him trapped down there. It's a new form of four verts here at Berkeley. <laughs> they did that for you. Like the Rams guys over there. Let's put set up a football play. Yep. 
So if Cone makes his free throw, it's now a two possession game. And I would make Washington use as much clock as possible. It does fall. Can't let him roll it. Cal now in no foul mode. Wheeler driving the action. Johnson to the corner. Holland a clean look. Wow. Huge for the Huskies. One point game. Brown waits to pick it up. Into AMAC. They foul with 23 and a half. Holland has hit four threes. Here's the problem. So let's say AMAC makes both of these. The debate comes in, do you foul or just guard up three? 23.5 is too much time to foul on that. It's got to be, everyone's got their own thing. I've always said 11 seconds or less, I'm fouling. So now they're going to have to guard. Now they're really going to have to guard. When do you go on this if you're watching? You've got to give yourself enough time to get an offensive rebound, and if you miss, enough time to foul and get it back and score at the other end. Warren Johnson back to Wheeler with eights. Like they're going for last. Brooks leaning in, rejected by AMAC, 4.4 remaining. And no timeout here either for Washington. All Cal's got to be thinking here is no foul. The last thing you want to do is put him on the foul line. Make him make a tough shot. Got to get it in. Wheeler out to Brooks. To the corner. Wood. To the <laughs> Moses Wood at the horn. Wow. Are they looking to see if he got it off? Because to me, it looks like he got it off in plenty of time. I thought Brooks for sure was shooting this. I thought they were going to look at if it was a foul or not, but it went in. Maybe if there's any time remaining for Cal. No. Point one, maybe. I'm with you, though. The willingness of Brooks. The leading scorer, not needing a three, to fling it to the corner for Moses Wood. Most number one guys in that situation, down one, clock running down, are, are, are doing it themselves. But Wood is such a, such a terrific three-point shooter. He saw him. You know, Wood started off really poor from behind the three-point line this year. He's at 34% now, so that tells you how good he's been of late from behind the three-point line. But... No bigger shot for him, obviously, in his Washington, early in his Washington career than that one. And if you're Cal, the monitor here, you're hoping for point two, maybe a chance to throw it the length of the floor and tip it in? That would be some play. A length, you see tip-ins from the front court a lot. Well, I, I, first I look for point three. I don't think there's any hope of no. point three based on the replay we showed. To me, the game's over because I don't think, like you said, I don't think there's going to be point three in a tip in. Got to go through the net, though, doesn't it? Game should be over. Randy McCall, Greg Nixon, Mike Littlewood taking a look. Moses Wood, who surpassed 1,400 career points in the most recent loss at UCLA. Scored in double figures both games last final week. Score, and it's final. No time left for Cal. Wood wins it for UW. Wow, what a win. They were up and they were down and then just made a play at the end. Keon Brooks, second leading scorer in the league. Unselfish play to Wood. And he knocks in a gigantic three at the buzzer to win it. Now, what does it say about Washington that they can cough up that lead? Their leading scorer, Brooks, not finding any success in the second half, and still they pull it out. What an entertaining game, and I'll say it for the tenth time tonight. We knew it would be competitive. We knew it would be tightly contested, and it was, and it was, and it took a three at the buzzer 
to settle this one. Washington 77-75 here at Cal. We're going to take you down to Maples Pavilion where Stanford is hosting Washington State with Ted Robinson and Bill Walton on the call.